All right, so this is our first lesson um, on exponential notation and product quotient of powers. Um, if you remember, product means multiplication and quotient means division. So the first thing we're going to look at is um, 5 times 5 times 5 times 5 times 5 times 5. So if you were to rewrite that with an exponent, it would be 5 raised to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6th power. In this case, the 5 is what you would call the base. The exponent is what you would call, or the 6 is what you would call the exponent. So our next one, 9 over 7 times 9 over 7 times 9 over 7 times 9 over 7. If you were to rewrite this, it would be 9 over 7 raised to the fourth power. So your base is 9 over 7. Your exponent is 4. Now number 3 and number 4 are opposite. You're taking it from exponential notation and you are now expanding it. So negative 4 over 11 to the third power is going to be negative 4 over 11 times negative 4 over 11 times negative 4 over 11. It doesn't matter how you choose to write it. Um, you will see that the base is negative 4 over 11 and the exponent is 3. So if I were to do number 4, I'm going to do it here instead of on the next slide, um, negative 2 to the 6th power, that is going to be negative 2 times itself 6 times. So 1, 2, 3... 4, 5, 6 times, where your base is negative 2, I'm having issues, and the exponent is 6. If you look up in this top box, it says, did you notice that the parentheses are used in number two, three, and four. Why do you think there are parentheses? If you'll notice in um, number two, it's a fraction. Number three is a fraction with a negative sign, and number four is a negative sign. So the parentheses are used for fractions and negative numbers. All right, looking at this slide, this slide is um, number three we already did on the previous slide, number four we already did. Remember that that base was negative two and the exponent was six. Um, and then number five, we have 3.8 to the fourth power. 3.8 to the fourth power, you can write as 3.8 times 3.8 times 3.8 times 3.8. Or you could choose to put that in parentheses. Um, decimals is not required for parentheses, but the base of this is 3.8 and the exponent is 4. So the vocabulary up here, you'll see that the number x to the n is called x raised to the nth, nth power, where n is the exponent and x is the base. On this page, I do really want you to try these exercises on your own, so please pause this as you need to um, so that you're not just relying on my answers. Um, for example, exercise one. It's 4 times dot, 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 times 4. But if you will see down below that it is 7 times. So this is the same thing as 4 raised to the 7th power. It is 4 multiplied by itself 7 times. 
Exercise 2, 3.6 times dot 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 times 3.6 equals 3.6 to the 47th power, which means that it is 3.6 times itself 47 times. Maybe you'll be a little bit better at filling in that blank than I was. Exercise 3, negative 11.63 times dot 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 times negative 11.63. This is multiplied by itself 34 times. What you do need to remember is that that negative 11.63, since it is negative, it needs to go in that parentheses and it's multiplied by itself 34 times. Exercise 4 is 12 times itself. How many times to become 12 to the 15th power? So that is 12 times itself 15 times. Exercise 5 is negative 5 times itself 10 times. As um, exponential notation, remember, because it is negative, it needs to have that parentheses. So it's negative 5 to the 10th power. Exercise 6 is 7 halves times itself 21 times. Because it is a fraction, you need to have that parentheses. So it's parentheses, 7 halves, parentheses, to the 21st power. Exercise 7, again, it's negative. So it's negative 13 in parentheses to the 6th power. Exercise 8 is negative and a fraction, so it very obviously needs to be in parentheses. So it's negative 1 14th to the 10th power. Exercise 9, the only thing different with this is that it is now x as your base, and it is x to the 185th power. Exercise 10, that is going to be x times itself n times. Exercise 11 has a few extra questions that you haven't seen before. Will these products be positive or negative? How do you know? So here's what you have to think about. It is a negative number that is being multiplied in both of them. So what you're really paying attention to is how many times is it being multiplied? We know that negative 1 times negative 1. A negative times a negative becomes a positive 1. It took two negative numbers to make one positive number. Will 12, being an even number, create an, a positive 1? Or will 13, being an odd number, create a positive 1? So will they be positive or negative? I want you to pause now, work it out some on your paper, and then press play when you feel like you have the answer. You should have figured out that the 12, with that being an even number, it will be a positive answer. And with 13 being an odd number, it will be a negative answer. So after what we just looked at from exercise 11, exercise 12 is saying, is it necessary to do all the calculations to determine the sign of the product, why or why not? I'm hoping that you have figured out that it's not necessary, that all you have to look at is the exponent. So go ahead and pause now and see if you can figure out exercise 12 on your own, whether it's positive or negative. Negative 5 to the 95th power is an odd number, so it'll be a negative number. And 122 is an even number, so it will be a positive answer. And then exercise 13 says fill in the blanks about whether the number is positive or negative. So if n is a positive even number, and if n is a positive odd number, it says they both are positive. It's saying that your exponent is positive. So that's not the information we're looking at. We are looking at whether we're looking at whether or not it's even or odd. So for the first one, if it's an even number, it will be positive. 
If it is an odd number, it will be negative. For exercise 14, I want you to pause now and see if you can figure out this answer on your own. Josie says that negative 15 times itself 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 times is negative 15 to the 6th power. Is she correct? How do you know? Well, yeah, it's negative 15 times itself 6 times, but she is missing a parenthesis. So she is not correct. Sorry, I didn't mean to move that. She is not correct. It should be parenthesis negative 15 to the 6th power. For exercise 15, I want you to expand and evaluate. What they mean by expand is to write it out um, with it being multiplication signs in each one. So if you were to expand that, it's negative 3 fourths times negative 3 fourths times negative three-fourths. If you're not sure what to do next, go ahead and follow along. If you feel like you might know what to do next, please press pause and then you can check your answer. Well, the first thing you want to look at is the negative sign. So I have a negative times a negative, which is the positive, times another negative, which means my answer will be negative. Then we multiply the numbers on the top or the numerator. So three times three is nine times three is 27 and then we multiply everything in the denominator. So four times four is 16, times four is 64. So there's your final answer. Now we're gonna do some trial and error. Um, we talked about um, how to read exponential notation. So now we're gonna look at expanding. So we expand 10 to the sixth power. Well, that's 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10. So it's 10 times itself six times. Now we need to expand 10 to the third power. So I have 10 times 10 times 10. And then it says to expand 10 to the sixth times 10 to the third. All you're really doing is combining these. So when I combine them, how many tens do I now have? I now have nine tens. Now, the only difference between 4 and 5 is now that you're using the letter A. So I want you to pause now and expand them on your own, and then see if you can figure out what the answer will become. All right, now that you have done it, you would have found that it's A times itself 4 times, then A times itself 5 times, and then you would have combined them all to find that the answer was A to the ninth power. So now we're looking at the rule. When you find the product, remember that product means multiply. So when you find the product of two algebraic expressions, expressions with the same base, you can add their exponents and use this exponent with the same base. So a to the m plus a to the n is going to be a to the m plus n. Go ahead and try the next three on your own. See if you can figure them out. So pause and then come back and see if you did it right. Remember number seven, that you have to keep that negative four in a parenthesis and two plus three is five. Number eight, there is an understood one there because three to the first power is always going to be three. So you be, that becomes three to the seventh power. And then number nine is going to be a to the 23rd plus nine is 32. Now that we've gone over the product, that means multiplication, we're going to moving on to the quotient or the division. So again, number 10, we're going to expand five to the sixth power, which is going to be five times itself, th six times. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Then we expand 5 to the second power, which is 5 times itself twice. Now we're going to see what happens when you divide it. So I have 5 times 5 times 5 times 5 times 5 times 5 times 5. That's 6 fives divided by 5 to the second, or sorry, 5 times 5. Now looking at this, are there anything in the numerator and denominator that can cancel out? Well, this 5 will cancel out this 5, and this 5 will cancel out this 5. 
So my answer is going to be 5 to the 4th power. So if you were to do that same thing for numbers 13 through 15, what would it become? Go ahead and pause it now and figure it out on your own. So I've already done that. Um, if you expand y to the 7th, it becomes y times itself 7 times. Expand y to the 4th power, and it becomes y times itself 4 times. So now we're going to divide them. So I'm going to have 7 y's on top. So there's 7, and I'm going to have whoops, 4 y's on bottom. And now I'm going to cancel out everything that can. So four y's on top canceled out the four y's on bottom to become y to the third power. So for the rule, when you find the quotient, remember that quotient means divide. When you find the quotient of two algebraic expressions with the same base, you can subtract their exponents and use this exponent with the same base base. So a to the m divided by a to the n becomes a to the m minus n. Using that rule, see if you can figure out 16 through 18 on your own, but I really want you to just focus on 16 and 17 to start with. So at least do those two um, and then unpause it when you're ready. Uh, 16, 9 minus 6 is 3. 17, 5 minus 1 is 4. All right, now you should be on 18. 18 is a little bit more difficult. So the first thing you need to look at is the numbers in front of all of the variables. Those are called the constants. So look at the constants. 35 divided by 5. That's just a division problem that you've always done. So 35 divided by 5 is 7. Then we look at the x's. So we need to see where is x larger. Is it larger in the numerator or is it larger in the denominator? Hopefully you figured out that it's larger in the numerator. So 4 minus 2 is 2, so 7x to the second. And now we're looking at the y's. The y's, again, you look at the numerator or the denominator where it's bigger. It's bigger in the numerator, so it stays in the numerator. And it becomes y to the fifth power because 7, or jk, it becomes y to the fourth power because 7 minus 3 is 4. All right, that was it for the first lesson. So the first half of the exponents information, uh, make sure that you finished out all of your notes on your own. Um, you can go back and rewind and play where you may have missed something. Um, otherwise, come to class with your notes done and you will have some activities you will do practicing your new information. See you next class.